Um, all right, everyone, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing started. Um, thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really nice to be joined uh, tonight by DePa Tigers. Just some housekeeping things uh, before we get started. In lieu of the chat function, if you have any questions that you want to ask tonight, we ask that you use the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. Um, that just helps us keep track uh, of questions that we've answered or things that we need to come back to. Sometimes, as I'm sure you've already all found out, becoming Zoom experts in the past month, that things can get lost in the chat button sometimes. Um, if you're having trouble hearing, maybe double check your own settings. Um, if you can, you know, keep yourself on mute for most of the time. If you feel like there's a time when you need to speak out, um, obviously we don't want to inhibit that, but you know, for background noise, if you can just keep yourself on mute for most of the time. Uh, and then of course, if there's video settings, you feel like you'd want to turn off and just tune in listening, that's clearly totally fine. Um, there's no set rules about that. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us virtually tonight. Most of you already know me, but I'm Katie Schmelzer and I'm a 2009 graduate. Um, if we've never met and you are younger than me, you've probably met my brother, Chris, who is a 2000 grad and arguably the more popular one, but not the more fashionable. So let's be very clear. Um, but uh, in the midst of this challenging time in the world, I believe we're all finding ways to reconnect to what's important to us and connect with individuals and our networks in new ways. As such, we'd like to take this time to welcome you tonight um, to show uh, first to show appreciation for your energy and time commitment to our alumni network and to one another, uh, and to spend some time talking tonight about ways that we might come together to help strengthen our own alumni network here in New York, offer current students and recent graduates with experiences like we all had, and then to support our university in ways beyond monetary giving. Tonight's agenda will focus primarily on the awesome work going on at the Catherine F. Hubbard Center for Student Engagement, as well as the mentoring program that has been a successful work in project, uh, work in progress, excuse me, here in the New York City area, thanks to Terrell Moore. Uh, I'd like to welcome and thank a few others before we get started. While it's a bummer that we cannot connect in person, the great news is that we're joined by Tigers outside the New York City area, um, tonight we have here our DePa Executive Director of Development, Steve Trotman, um, Zayda Banassi, excuse me, the class of 1985, who is our Director of Alumni Engagement for Regional and Class Programs. And I owe her a special thanks for her continued support of the New York City area. Uh, along with us tonight, also with us tonight, are various members of the Graduates of the Last Decade Alumni Board, including Vice President Jordan Davis, class of 2014. Uh, and before I get into introducing our panelists tonight, I'd like to turn it over to Jordan for a few updates from the Gold Alumni Board, and then over to Zaida for a quick check-in. All right, good evening, everybody. I know it's probably been a long day, but I'm bringing um, so much energy from inside my living room. Um, but I'm so grateful for Katie for giving me the moment to share really quickly um, about some things that we're partnering with, with the Gold Board. Um, if you're not familiar, the Go Board um, serves as active liaisons for Gold alumni graduates of the last decade to the university. So we are um, the voice for our young alumni, and we lead a lot of volunteer efforts, such as the annual Go Giving Drive, working with admissions, and celebrating the fifth and tenth year reunions. Um, this year, um, we are focusing along with the university around diversity and inclusion, primarily around how we build connections with alumni and respond to young alumni concerns. Um, so some of the things you can look forward to receiving from us um, this summer is a resource roundup, uh, a document that literally tells us where, if you have questions or concerns, who you can go to, who you can talk to, um, who can you partner with, as well as being very intentional about partnering with our regional chapters around the country. One way in which we want to um, promote collaboration is uh, working with a singer, Justin Collado, who is on this call. Um, he is going to be a Class 2020 alum um, in a month or so. I mean, he has started a GoFundMe. I know talking about money is a little hesitant, um, but it's for a great cause. He's raising money to have a celebration here in New York for our New York alums. Um, so I want to put the link in the chat box. Just take a look at it. Um, it has um, information. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to myself or to Justin Collado. We're really gonna be working on developing this event. 
It was supposed to be planned for May, but due to COVID, um, we're gonna postpone it a little bit further in the year. Um, so look forward to that, especially being a part of the New York City Regional Association to rally around our seniors, especially this year and supporting them along this journey. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, Zaida, if you wanna go ahead and introduce a poll. First, I wanna welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. I thought we would start with um, just seeing how everybody was doing. So I have a poll that basically, how are you doing today? Um, excellent, great, meh, not so good. Um, if we can see um, how folks feel today, especially um, in these, you know, tricky times that, um, you know, are affecting all of us and, and working from home and et cetera. So give it a few more minutes. Looks like everyone is doing well. Um, thank you for doing that. Um, and that's really good to hear. Um, I'm glad everyone is doing so well during this time and I appreciate you coming and I'll hand it back to Katie. Yeah. Um, thanks. Again, if you came in a few minutes late prior to housekeeping right at the beginning, um, in lieu of the chat function, if you have a question tonight as an attendee, please just put it in the Q&A um, box at the bottom. It just helps us keep track of questions we've answered and doesn't get lost in the chat. Um, try to keep yourself on mute. Any video setting that you like, there are no rules. Um, but we'll go ahead and jump into introducing our panelists tonight. Um, very, very grateful again for everyone taking the time. Uh, we'll first start with Erin Mahoney, who lives in Greencastle and is the mother of two daughters, a 2015 graduate, and the other who plans to become a class of 2025 Tiger. Currently the Director of Career Development, Advising and Internships, Erin graduated from DePauw in 1986. After working 11 years in the field of employment and training, she returned to DePauw 21 years ago to work in career services. Her favorite part of her DePauw experience was the opportunity to follow her passion for historic preservation through internships, independent studies, and coursework. Uh, we're also joined by Erin Duffy, who currently resides in Indianapolis with her husband of 22 years, two daughters, ages 20 and 17, and the family dog. She's been on the board at DePauw for two and a half years as the Director of Career Services and Employer Relations. Erin graduated in 1990, and one of her favorite times at DePauw was participating in the semester-long program with the Philadelphia Center, where she worked in promotions at Philadelphia Magazine. Next up, in love with connecting his network to great opportunities, 2014 graduate Terrell Moore is a recruitment consultant at Real Life Sciences. More important to him than his career achievements is his volunteer service. Terrell is a member of the DePauw University Gold Alumni Board and New York Regional Alumni Association. The first Evan lecture he attended featured former President Bill Clinton. He now streams the Evan lectures to enjoy the insights of great leaders who visit campus. And then our final panelist tonight is Kaya Simmons, who graduated from DePauw in 2016 with a communications degree. She then went on to earn a master's degree from Grand Valley State University in education with a focus on college student affairs leadership. Uh, for the last two years, she's worked at SUNY Old Westbury on Long Island, where she currently resides. And in her time at DePaul, one of Kaya's favorite memories and activities was serving as the student coordinator for the non-food pantry at St. Andrew's Church. Um, and she's joining us tonight as the panelist um, who is a mentor in Terrell's mentee, mentor mentee program that he'll speak to later. So welcome everyone, welcome everyone in the room. Um, and we'll just hop right into it. Um, first, we're gonna talk about the Hubbard Center and I'll turn that over to Erin Mahoney, who's gonna speak to what the Hubbard Center does how it's evolved over the past five to 10 years, uh, and then kind of turn it to our attendees to have some reflection experiences. Uh, thank you very much, Katie. Um, for those that, uh, there may be a few that remember, um, we actually came together, we should be celebrating our 10 years um, 
in uh, as an integrated center in the union building. So we first were um, the civic, global, and professional opportunities um, center, and so or better known as CG Pops. It didn't take long to <laughs> acquire that title, but um, we were really focused when we came together. It was career services, off-campus study, and service, so the Hartman House. And so we're very focused on experiential learning, which we still are. And so that was sort of the key reason that they brought um, those three offices and areas together 10 years ago. Um, just due to some changes over that time period and that evolution um, that Katie mentioned with uh, the service and Hartman House left, um, but they have relocated very recently back upstairs for the Union Building, so it's great to have them uh, back in our area and to have those students um, so close to be able to collaborate with. But um, in that time period, we also gained um, the pre-law and pre-health um, program. We're used to those were advised by a faculty member. They were part-time positions. Now we have um, a full-time pre-law advisor um, who's a graduate of McKinney Law School. Uh, we also have a pre-health um, advisor who is housed in our area. And um, another piece of their work and much of the work that's happened with the Hubbard Center is some very generous gifts along the way. So um, just a us getting to be now, I guess, several years ago, we received the gift from um, Catherine Hubbard that allowed a bricks and mortar change. So actually the creation of a physical center um, that's, it's very beautiful and it's on two floors of the, of the union building now. And, and with that, with her gift, there were some other um, support as long, as well as um, gifts from Ken and Carrie Cocolet that have enabled specific work um, for the sophomore class as well as we um, have peer advisors, the Cocolette peer consultants that write us um, uh, uh, feedback on how we're serving students and help um, just supplement our office and guidance for students. Uh, we also have gifts that support both that pre-law, pre-health, as well as uh, our off-campus study programs, which is the other key piece of what we do. So we do, um, very recently, and Aaron will talk about that, was the addition of the employer relations team. So career services, my team is very inward focusing on students, working to help prepare them. So we talk to them about that career development, the assessment piece, how to prepare everything from their LinkedIn, their resume, interview preparation, mock interviews. Um, we do all that piece, obviously the advising on pre-law, pre-health and graduate school comes out of our section. And then Aaron Duffy's um, team works more external facing. So working with our alumni, working with our employers, uh, visiting across the country. And um, I don't know if she has any piece of that that she would sort of like to share about her team um, in that development. Thanks, Aaron. Of course I would. Um, so as Erin Mahoney said, uh, my team of employer relations, are, we have a team of three. Um, we came together about two, two and a half years ago uh, with the purpose of um, broadening and deepening opportunities for students. Um, so our main focus is mostly alumni like you um, and also some wonderful employer partners that we work with. Um, across the country. So um, prior to COVID, we um, were spending a lot of time on the road and developing relationships and ha hosting events and trying to um, generate alumni engagement um, to help students connect with jobs and internships and just general mentoring or, or networking. So. Um, we still love doing that work and we're still doing it and we're just doing it a little differently right now. So I guess the other piece just to represent off-campus study, uh, just because that is a key piece to experiential learning on the DePauw campus. And so we do programs both for winter term and May term. Um, the school made the transition uh, several years ago to that 4141. And so uh, we have the semester, we have the January term, the, then the spring semester and the May term. So students have an opportunity to study um, off campus in courses that allow them to travel 
um, both domestically and abroad for both winter term and May term, um, as well as, of course, the traditional study abroad for both the spring and fall semester. Um, as you can imagine, this was a very trying time, but we have everyone back. Um, uh, this semester and um, they're working. Many of those students are able to complete their programs um, that they were doing abroad um, or domestically remotely. Uh, so, but it's still, it's not quite the value it is um, to have that experience abroad or, or domestically as Aaron experienced with the Philadelphia Center. So um, just to represent that they um, do significant work off campus as well. And students can do internships in those opportunities, both of course the Philadelphia Center, the New York Arts, the Washington Media. I'm sorry about my cats. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then abroad IES and FIE, both have internship opportunities for students. So of course, internships is that one final key piece of what we do. Um, and so I think I'll, I'll talk about that um, in just a little bit when we talk about our opportunities for students. Yeah, and I, um, you know, one of the things that I think is um, really great about being in the New York area, and one of the things that I've noticed and a lot of attendees on this on this call probably have too, is that, um, you know, sometimes geographic location for us is really tricky in New York City, um, you know, depending on the borough that you're in or the state that you're in. Some of us are in the New Jersey area joining us tonight. I know um, Kaya's uh, on Long Island, but personally, I, you know, had a college experience that brought me to New York City and what I love in a lot of my interactions with the attendees and the panelists is that um, work experience and providing that opportunity for students here in the New York area really gets, um, it, it seems to draw a lot of really enthusiastic energy. Um, and I know many people on this call tonight, uh, attendees and panelists have, have kind of paid it forward to current students. Um, and I think this would be a really great time maybe for attendees um, or for panelists, any panelists that are that are here tonight. Um, if you've had kind of an experience either as a mentor or an alumni that you'd like to speak to, um, or if you are a student uh, and had, you know, an experience that was meaningful to you, either through the Hubbard Center or not. I would say um, I distinctly remember um, working with Steve Langrup uh, in the Hubbard Center, and he had first convinced me as a sophomore to create a LinkedIn account. And I was confused because um, I said, Steve, I already have enough social media platforms. I'm on Facebook. You know, I'm not trying to create a LinkedIn. And he said, he said to me, It'll, it will be career suicide if you do not have a LinkedIn profile. Um, and he was right. Uh, LinkedIn is now widely used as, you know, a, a professional platform that helps people get opportunities in the market. Uh, and so the Hubbard Center in that case, working with Steve definitely was a game changer for me. Yeah. I think um, my experience, and uh, Kevin James is on the call and I know has been connected to Noel Hayashi um, and being an intern for her. It wasn't through the Hubbard Center, but it was through um, management fellows at that time. But of course, people who know me on the call know that I'm a management fellows dropout. <laughs> and I think I ended up going through the Hubbard Center to be able to secure that internship. Um, and then, you know, to kind of to kind of wrap that up, is there anyone for for our panelists tonight? Um, how did any part of your DePaul experience get you where you are today? Um, I, I can go. Yeah. Uh, so as everyone heard in my bio, I do work in student affairs, right? So I never actually left college. Um, and we kind of laugh about that. Um, but it was my DePaul experience that definitely brought me to where I am. Um, I had a mentor on campus, um, Vince Greer, who uh, at the time worked in the Multicultural um, Student Services Office. And he said to me, you can do this for a living, right? Like, you could find this as a passion and love what you do. 
And he was like, yeah, so let me tell you what I got into. And um, he had went to Brown after uh, DePaul um, and decided to work and do the diversity work that he does. And he was like, you could do this too. Um, and he got me into seeing how to develop student leaders. And what does that mean for them, not only at DePaul and other colleges, what does that mean post-graduation? Um, and there are some other Def um, DePaul folks like Wendy Whippage, um, who I, I went to her alma mater for graduate school um, and that she, she literally dig, dug in her pocket and said, hey, I'll pay for your graduation. I'll, I'll pay for your um, graduate admission uh, fee for my institution. And she did that. And you know, I was like, hey, I'm going to go here. Um, and so it was like the people at DePaul who touched me and said, hey, look, this is a great career path for you. This is what you're going to do. And I believe in you. And they pushed me every step away to get to graduate school. And that's the kind of impact that DePaul itself has, along with its alumni. And I think anyone that just gets involved with the institution, they have that loving, I want to see you succeed moment. And then they just passed it along to me. And that's part of the reason why I got involved with the mentor program with Terrell, is I wanted to take those moments and say, hey, you can do that too. Here's what happened for me. No, thank you so much for that. That's, that's really powerful. Um, and we'll definitely be speaking more to your DePa experience um, with the mentoring program in just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to shift gears quickly before we come back to that and just talk a little bit with Erin Duffy um, about how the Hubbard Center is working uh, on behalf of students and then also alumni. I know this came up a little bit uh, in Erin Mahoney's um, kind of laying out what the Hubbard Center does, but I'd love to hear more from uh, you, Erin Duffy, <laughs> um, about how the Hubbard Center is available to alumni. Um, and then, you know, how we bridge those gaps between what we're doing in New York City um, and the successful alumni that we have in, here in the room tonight and throughout the area, and how those successes can, can um, flourish, um, not just for students, but also for alumni through the Hubbard Center. Absolutely. Oh, now my dog's barking. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think what is a little known fact is that um, the Hubbard Center isn't just here for students, um, but it is also a resource for alumni, whether you're 22 or 72. So if you're looking to make a career change, if you're looking to move to a different city, um, if you just kind of want to assess where you are in your career, or even have somebody look your resume over, um, all of the all of the programming and opportunities that we provide for students are available for alumni as well. Um, and I know Erin Mahoney's worked with alumni. I have too. Um, so it's it's you know it's it's we're we're here for you for life, um, and we want you to be successful. And we want you to, um, you know, explore every available opportunity you have in your career. Um, the beauty about what we do and the, the, the DePaul community, as well as just <clears throat> the size of the university that we are, is that we're very high touch and we can provide very individual one-on-one -on -one attention, which is something that I appreciate. Um, not only as a staffer, but as an alum. Um, so we're always looking for ways to either connect alumni to alumni or alumni to students. Um, I will say DePaul alumni are very generous of their time, um, their expertise, and their resources. And as I think we've already heard, it's, it's very much um, a community that wants to knows the value of what they received and wants to pay it forward. Um, so when we do events like this, we're often asking if there are, is there, if there, of the participants, if there's any interest in, you know, helping support students through jobs or internships or even um, making connections. Uh, we, the students of today don't like the word networking, but that's, uh, we, we, try to talk about making connections, but um, networking and mentoring. I know, you know, from my own personal experience that that was something that uh, got me to where I am today. Um, and, you know, we're students are 
eager and interested in having those experiences. So uh, just a little bit of information about the class of 2019. Um, we poll them, we poll the class uh, every year, the graduating class every year, and ask them if they did internships and how many internships they did. Um, and 80% of the class, 85% of the class of 2019 participated in an internship. And of those, 77% did more than one. So I think this is an institution that was one of the things that drew me to DePaul was the ability to have that um, experiential learning along with the liberal arts education. Um, so I think, you know, we're all in this together and, and we are here for you, whether you're a student or whether you're, you know, somebody from the class of 1990 like me. Yeah, no, thank you, Erin, so much. Um, you know, and again, I think I keep coming back to it, but I do, you know, one of the things that really um, is great about living in the New York area and being out here is having just the diversity um, and the network connections and how, like you said, a lot of the people who continue to influence me out here, even if I, you know, don't readily touch base with them, um, but you know, every time and again, is the willingness um, that anyone that I've ever connected with, even just casually, has has provided. Um, you know, and a lot of that is is organic, um, and I I really appreciate that. Um, to shift gears a little bit again, to you know, not only continue to foster those inorganic or those organic kind of um, interactions. But something that we're doing out here in New York that Terrell has been doing um, for, for quite a while now, almost, I don't know, Terrell, you can tell us when you give us the overview, um, is the mentoring program that we've been speaking about. And so a lot of you might already be familiar with it, but that's kind of the brain baby and the work of Terrell. Um, he works with alumni like Kaya to connect them with either uh, current students or recent college graduates to help foster um, that kind of more organized uh, mentor program. So Terrell, if you don't mind, um, you know, coming off mute and kind of preaching to us and then Kaya jumping in on your own experience, um, would love to continue to hear how it's going. Thank you, Kay. I appreciate it. And then, of course, thank you to everyone who uh, is with us tonight. And, and you know, thank you so much for sharing this time with us. Uh, the mental program with the New York Alumni Association has been um, a great journey in terms of connecting students from the New York region with their home base. Uh, and what has really inspired the mentor program uh, within me was the experience I had as an alum in, in recent graduate from DePaul University, uh, moving from Greencastle to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I knew no one in Milwaukee. And I reached out to the alumni chapter uh, that's there. And I remember Kim Applebach uh, reaching out to me and having lunch with me, welcoming me to the city, and then also mentoring me. Uh, and I had no idea that at the time she sat on the board of this amazing nonprofit organization that work with uh, elementary school and middle school students on conflict resolution. And we had the opportunity to work together and, and I eventually became a member of that board as well. And then coming back to New York, um, just meeting up with Katie um, and getting those confirmations that if you happen to walk outside with that DePaul logo or you had that DePaul affinity that you have a community anywhere else is another tiger. Um, and one of the hallmarks of success in college um, is its alumni network. And, and I strongly believe that um, what also inspired just the execution of, hey, we, we should probably do this is um, when DePaul announced the goal commitment. Uh, and when, when they announced their commitment to students, not only completing to graduation in four years, 
but then to also have an opportunity when they return home or wherever they go uh, from campus. And uh, I sort of I took, I saw that as a call to action where alumni can really help uh, get from what at the time was 97% to 100%. So if we can get that extra 3% for our students, our alumni can certainly help because that's been my experience. Uh, and I know it's been an experience of so many other alumni. And I think that we can sort of replicate that uh, over and over again, year after year. And specifically with the New York students, traveling you know, over 800 miles away from home um, has its own sort of challenges when you think about transitioning. So we wanted to make sure that when they return home for fall break, spring break, uh, that they have a home base that they can return to with alumni who's gonna help them. So what that help looks like is alumni, and, and there are two sort of entry points that you can work with students. Uh, for alumni that have the bandwidth to work with students on a consistent timeline basis, usually once per month uh, at the very least, uh, where they can connect with students from their first year. Um, this year was our first first year cohort um, that we had the opportunity to work with. So this is the class of 2024. Um, we have a cohort of 11 students from the New York region who are part of the mentor program, who have mentors, who work, who connect with them on a monthly basis. Um, and each month they have discussion prompts that uh, we sort of craft and to sort of help curate conversation and often and often try to have sort of those organic um, connect points in addition to the career aspect of developing a LinkedIn profile, going to the Hubbard Center to get a professional headshot for that LinkedIn profile, um, start tweaking of the resume as we, as we close out that first semester and we leverage your success from the fall to start thinking about internship applications for the summer and providing links to the type of internships that exist back home that you can apply to. I think mentors like Kyer have done a great job of doing that. And then we add a little bit um, in those sort of discussion prompts, things that are relevant to what students are experiencing at the time. So in October, we talk about um, Old Go Weekend. In November, we talk about Monon Bell. Um, in January, what are your plans for winter term? And, and just to always try to connect um, the conversation back to what students may be experiencing on campus. So uh, that's sort of what the mentor program is. Uh, and alumni have um, volunteered their time really well. And the second point of which uh, a point of contact that, meant that alumni can always help is if there is an opportunity where on a one-off basis, you may have the time to work with a student on a resume or a student is applying specifically to your company and you may be able to provide some insight of what it's like to join that culture uh, or that industry. Uh, we always look for ways to get alumni to connect with students in any way that could be meaningful. And I also have a dog, so he, if he barks in the background, I apologize for that. Um, no, thank you, Terrell. And, you know, like I said, Terrell has been kind of putting in the, the work and kind of moving through this. And, and we've been, again, experimenting what works, what doesn't. Um, I feel like, you know, New York area alumni, it's always been a little bit stop and go. Um, but this is one area where I've, you know, we're finding that our success is continually growing. Um, and Kaya, I would love to hear from you, you know, to kind of round it out. Um, you know, again, if you're joining tonight and you're looking for ways to connect or reconnect, um, you know, and, and connecting to the university monetarily or going back is not something, um, you know, that, that you're available to do, but getting involved in this way is. Um, Kai, I would love to know about your experience with your mentee um, and how that's looked for you. I know you're in education, so I feel like this is like you're like, you know, but, but for someone who maybe is, is not in education, um, but is looking to maybe connect and give back, if you can speak to, to how that's going for you, that would be awesome. Of course. Um, so yeah, I'm in education, so this is my jam. Um, 100%. <laughs> Same. Same. Um, but the thing is, I think 
about having a mentee is being able, like Katie said, to give back my time when I don't have the monetary resources to do so. Or at least when I started doing the mentor piece, I had just got into my first full time work. And I was like, do I have the money to get to DePaul? No, but I have the time, right? And I can be that person who connects with someone to say, hey, look, I know exactly what you're going through because five, six years ago, I was you. Um, and I can help you matriculate like, through this process. And you don't have to have a background in education to understand what someone's going through, particularly because you have the experience of doing it yourself. Um, so my mentee's name is Ashley, um, and she's an amazing human being who has all of these passions um, and exciting things that she wants to do at DePaul. But before we had our original conversation, she was so terrified on doing any of those things for particularly being 800 miles away from home that she didn't know how to navigate that. Right. And that was like my first experience of saying, okay, well, here's my expertise, right? Like I left New York, you know, all that time ago, those 800 miles, they're going to seem like nothing once you get there, because here's what you need to do. First, you're going to find your tribe. Right, find the things and passions that you have at DePaul and those interests that are gonna keep you going. When you're homesick, right? Lean on those student organizations that you are enthralled with, you know, such as like Feminista or um, you know, any of the other organizations, like or being an environmental fellow, right? Or a management fellow or anything like that, those are the things that are gonna keep us grounded at DePaul. And those were the type of experiences that I had with my mentee who now is off going to explore all of those fellowship programs. Um, so I'm sure as soon as campus opens back up, she's going to be right in the Hubbard Center. Um, but that, that's the kind of experience that we want all of our students to have. And that's why I think for anyone on this call who isn't already involved in the mentorship program, like, please connect with Terrell and say, hey, look, I'm interested because our students need to hear us. Um, additionally, I think it's about us being able to say, do the time and close to graduation, what happens if I'm not allowed to uh, get a job, right? Or if I'm not hired or something like that. It's providing that ease to a student and saying, hey, don't worry, this liberal arts education is going to take you miles and miles and miles beyond places just based on the experiences that you have. And I think that's a real fear for our students, even if they see that, that they see that 97% number that we're talking about with our gold commitment and saying, what if I'm in that 3%? And having a mentor eases that fear a whole lot better than just having to navigate that experience by yourself. Um, so ultimately, I think it's been a really good experience. Um, and I will also say, in addition to supporting my mentee, um, I know I've been shouting out Terrell a lot, but like he calls me on a regular basis. And he's like, hey, what can we do about this? How do you feel about this? And like you have that own personal feeling as I'm also a part of this program, not just for my mentee, but for my own personal development um, and professional development. So there are multiple levels here. Um, same as the Hubbard Center does, isn't just for our current DePaul students, it's for the alumni. This mentorship program is also a way to kind of grow yourself. Uh, yeah, so that's been my experience. Uh, hopefully everyone was able to hear me. I know I talk a little fast and everybody, like that's kind of a New York thing, so y'all got it. <laughs> But other than that, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed the experience. Please connect with Terrell. Get on it. Like, this is for everybody. Yeah, no, thank you again. I was like, I'm like, oh, we can just end there. Like, we can end on that note. <laughs> uh, but no, just to, you know, speak to that. Um, and thank you so much, Kaya, for sharing. You know, we have quite a few people here who, um, you know, I'm class of 2009, so I, you know, just aged out of of gold um and uh you know there's people here tonight across the spectrum um who have been in new york for years and years and years some who are originally from new york or have been making their way back um but you know if if this is something that you're interested in or reconnecting with the university um kind of on that career level i know there's people in the room tonight kaya you spoke to terrell being your mentor um there's people in the room tonight who have have really been my mentor um, or even just a casual kind of comfort um, you know Kevin James don't worry I got you I remember that one or two times that we had coffee and good chats about being musicians and, and music educators um, but you know really feel free to just reconnect in this way um, you know every time that we have a New York event like this it may not always be very well attended but it's a really great way for us to keep those connections going 
Um, and we would just like to continue to foster that on, on this level. Um, at this time, if there's anyone who would like to either, you know, come off mute and, and speak out, attendees or panelists or anyone um, who'd like to put a question in the chat box that we can answer um, or pose to the panelists, that would be really awesome. Um, so I'll take a few more minutes kind of doing some Q&A uh, and then we'll round out in, in just a bit. Can y'all hear me? Oh, it's Andrew BK. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I just want to say um, I've kind of um, known Terrell for a while and seeing the maturation of the program um, and working with the alumni office. Um, hi, Zaida. Hi, Aaron. Um, I think it's definitely become a, a great program, um, and I think it could be expanded. Um, I'm going to reach out to him after this to see how I can get more involved. Um, and also uh, with Jordan on some more New York type opportunities. Uh, I'm going to be bringing back this, the Gold Council to see how we can replicate um, in different regions as well um, and just do some different type of things. Um, so really appreciate you guys getting this together. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's good to hear from you over there, VK. You've been kind of quiet. Um, yeah, no, I, I um, really appreciate it. And again, another thing um, that uh, we're looking at doing, and if you know anyone um, who is part of the graduates of the last decade, um, again, that time piece, I think, is really important in that experience piece. So if you know anyone um, in the New York area or um, who is a graduate of the last decade that you can pass along, um, we'd also like to start passing the torch to help get them involved in the New York Alumni Association um, on this level as well. But um, yeah, I think at this point, um, if there aren't any more questions or if anyone like, wouldn't like to pose anything, it looks like there might be one yeah. here. Um, question is, did any of our panelists have any winter or May experiences? Um, I am too old to have had a May experience, but I did do an internship in Chicago and during winter term one year. I, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just going to share that um, outside of my experience with the Philadelphia Center, I did do an intern. There was a period of time where I wanted to, thought I wanted to go to law school. Um, and so I did an internship at a law firm, and the the good thing about that was I realized that that was not a career path that I wanted to pursue. So it was a great experience in a different kind of way, um, and we talk a lot to our um, students about that, that you might want to try something out and see, dip your toe in the water, and internships are a great way to do that, because um, you may find the love, the the career love of your life or you might decide that that wasn't a, a path that was right for you. Okay. Um, I've done a J term um, and I've had the opportunity to do a May term. Uh, I want to take the time to speak about my May term because it was a May term in service um, and actually a grant that I received from the Hubbard Center to be a leader on that trip. Um, so they paid for a third of it, which I've ex been extremely thankful for. Um, I've had the opportunity to go um, to Northern Ireland um, on the Peace Players International trip, uh, ran with um, Bill Fenton, the basketball coach, right? Um, and doing that work on conflict resolution um, and using basketball as a tool in places of conflict, um, such as Northern Ireland. They also go in other places like Turkey um, and a few other places around the world. Um, but definitely that was probably the highlight of one of my experiences at DePaul. Um, I was always big on service um, and doing things domestically um, and didn't actually realize that there were international service opportunities. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that we, I love that we push at our institution is those experiential learning opportunities, right? I knew nothing about the conflict 
um, between the Protestants and the Catholics and not even understanding that it parallels at the same time with the civil rights movement. Um, and I can give you a ton of facts, right, that I remember from three years ago, right, from six, seven years ago that aren't relevant. But now if you ask me about trivia um, and a bunch of things that I picked up while out of the country, I can say, hey, look, like I learned that, right? I know that you can pick out a Catholic or a Protestant in Northern Ireland based on their clothes or based on the the uh, sport that they play, right? Whether it's um, soccer or uh, Gaelic football, right? And that, those are like small little nuances that even I drop in tidbits and interviews and, um, that definitely have propelled like my experience. Um, so yeah, definitely May terms, J terms, uh, my favorite parts about the ball. Yeah. I would definitely, oh, I'm sorry, Erin. Oh, even. Okay, well, thanks. Um, uh, even back um, in my era, we had four winter terms that we had to do. We also didn't have May term. Uh, so I had a great experience interning for a Main Street. As I shared in my bio, um, I have a real passion for historic preservation, even though that is not what I do. And I also have a passion to help people find uh, what they want to do for their career. And that started actually in a sociology class about industrial sociology at DePauw. Um, because historic preservation is a little harder to follow as a career. Um, still have a passion, have done that work, and it's definitely on my bucket list for when I retire uh, to get back involved in that. Um, and I've done some work on and off, but I had an internship and then I did an independent study uh, with a faculty member and actually put a church on the historic pres um, registry and uh, the National Historic Reser Registry, which is, these are just, I love to hear um, other alumni and students talk about their experiences and I'm very passionate about the value of a winter term experience and Raj Balani for those that remember Raj we used to regularly talk about the value of winter term and he just would always say oh you DePaul alumni and and I said but you know how many great stories I've heard from our alums about winter term and I know I have my own um, experiences too but so yes I, I, I had a couple of great experiences yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that, uh, if I remember correctly, and I did not participate in this, but again, it was, I keep mentioning um, Noel Hayashi. Not many people probably know of her, but she was in the New York area for a very long time. And she ran a, a nonprofit called the Center for Creative Resources. And so Rachel Ruth was an intern there and then actually went back and worked for the Center for Creative Resources for a while. Um, and then after she was an intern, I was an intern, which definitely shaped, uh, even though I'm a teacher now, it's shaped a lot of my values and a lot of my experiences. Um, but I do remember that with Gigi Fenlin, she had put together uh, a winter term experience where there was actually a group of students um, who were who came out of our winter term and were doing internships and things through the Center uh, for Creative Resources. So they were working with artists, they were working with musicians, they were working um, in arts business places. Um, I never got to take part in that internship experience, winter term experience. It, I got the full semester with, with Noel, but um, from what I remember, that was a really awesome uh, collaboration and experience for those students. Um, if there's not any more questions or if there's anyone that wants to jump in, we'll wrap up. Um, I'm going to post. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I just wanted to real quickly update everybody on summer internships. Um, for, and I know for alumni, they may not be um, first and foremost, but definitely for our <laughs> students. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's fine. It's definitely for our students with COVID-19. Um, they are, and, and some have been very fortunate to be able to transition to a remote internship. And, and DePa did come out just late last week and say, um, if students, uh, we would be able to enroll students. So students need to get two extended studies um, now to graduate. Um, and those can be a winter term, a May term, and um, they had added in the last few years, um, a summer experience. So our students, which really helps those numbers that Aaron Duffy talked about, um, as, as and, and it's just so key, a, a summer internship, not that winter term um, and isn't important, it is, but a summer gives them eight, eight to 10 weeks of an experience. And so um, our students uh, have been able, some of them to change it to remote, 
unfortunately some of our students have lost internship opportunities um, but we can enroll them and we can help with some of those costs associated through our summer internship grant which again is to, um, a wonderful um, attribute to the support of our alumni because those are all based on gifts last year we served about nine 90 students and gave out two hundred and four thousand uh, dollars for summer internships and support for those that work in nonprofits governments or startups um, again that's all um, almost all donor funds and um, so it's a just wonderful uh, ability for us to be able to help our students to have meaningful career experiences but if anyone is aware of remote internships uh, please let Erin Duffy um, anyone on her team or myself know about those and we can definitely share those with our students that some of those who have lost those opportunities um, for their summers and are still looking. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I forgot to, <laughs> I had that lined up on the agenda. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I will, um, we will check the questions one last time. Um, Luis asks, due to social distancing, will there be any video meetup equivalent opportunities to connect and build with fellow alumni? Uh, and then another question, how are we connecting and inspiring students in the current times? Um, these are basically, yeah. Are there opportunities for alumni and current students co to connect? Um, and I think the answer is to just be very transparent. Um, an opportunity for us to connect to talk about the Hubbard Center to talk about these opportunities um, but this was also sort of a test run to see how things went um, with the incoming president I know that there was prior to um, this 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 pandemic that we're all experiencing there was quite a bit of excitement both on campus and here in the New York area for that incoming president um, and so the hope, and I think Zaida, Aaron, and Aaron can, can speak to this, the hope is that yes, we'll be able to continue these um, to gear up for um, our new president coming in and hopefully connect with, with her in ways like this as well. Yes, Aaron. we have um, several opportunities um, on our website of different um, virtual events, whether they be this format, whether it be, um, for the young tigers, um, whether it be, you know, social media, all sorts of things are coming on board. This is actually our first virtual event um, in this format using Zoom. So we look to expand on this and offer many, many more in all the regions. Yeah, no, thank you for those questions and thank you again for attending tonight. Um, in line with that, I'm going to leave you with two links. Um, I won't, I'll share, I'll share the video with everyone since it's seven on the dot. Um, I will share the YouTube video and, and, uh, you can watch it as, after we convene. Um, but the first thing that I'll share with you is if you haven't looked at it yet is, um, the Boulder and the Boulder, uh, that is the article about our incoming president. In that, there are two video links embedded um, so you can watch kind of um, her induction and, and her first chat that she gave uh, in the GCPA. And then the second, um, I went searching for maybe something more recent, uh, but there wasn't. So this YouTube link, if you would like to sing tonight and toast to DePauw, it is there for you. <laughs> um, if we had the time, we would we would share it out, and you know, you could all just belt it out in your own homes. But I will leave it all to you. Uh, thank you again so much for coming. If you have any feedback on this format, you can feel free to shoot an email, text my way, uh, and I'll pass it on to Zaida. Um, if you'd like to get involved. With the mentor program or with the Hubbard Center, again, you can connect with me or Terrell or Zaida, um, Aaron or Aaron, and we'll pass that on. Um, but again, thank you all so, so very much. And um, we appreciate it. I want to thank the panelists. Thank you all for yeah. uh, your time. Um, I know it's, it's, a, it's a big commitment. And I really, really appreciate your time and your thoughts tonight. Thank you.
Yeah. Thanks everyone. Have a great night.